guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about the gastrointestinal perforations. So let's get started. So what is a gastrointestinal perforation? A gastrointestinal perforation, also known as a ruptured bowel, is a hole in the wall of part of the gastrointestinal tract, which includes the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. The perforation can be due to a number of different diseases, including peptic ulcer disease, ulcerative colitis, appendicitis, having any tumors in the GI tract, having diverticulitis, suffering an injury from trauma, such as a knife wound or a gunshot wound, swallowing of any sharp foreign bodies, or having a gallbladder perforation. So in my picture on the right, you can see the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large bowel or the colon. And a gastrointestinal perforation means a hole or a break in the wall of any one of these structures. So most of these structures, with the exception of the esophagus, which lies mostly in the thorax, lie within the abdominal cavity. And within the abdominal cavity, they are covered by something called the peritoneum, which is sort of like a cover that covers over all these abdominal viscera. Viscera just means abdominal organs, right? So what actually happens in gastrointestinal perforations is that when these holes or perforations occur in these different organs, they leak out into the abdominal cavity. And you can see here, I put in an example at the bottom, we have a perforation of the stomach which is probably due to a peptic ulcer and you can see that hydrochloric acid together with all the food etc that is within the gastric cavity will leak out now into the abdomen and this is what a gastrointestinal perforation is. So something to note, while considered a rare occurrence, a gastrointestinal perforation is a medical emergency that has a mortality rate of 20 to 40 percent. The spilling of the contents into the peritoneal cavity causes inflammation of the membrane that lines the abdominal cavity known as peritonitis due to digestive enzymes, stomach acid, and the gut bacteria invading the space they shouldn't be. Chances of recovery improve with early diagnosis and treatment because peritonitis can lead to sepsis and septic shock. And for those of you who don't know what sepsis is, I just put in a brief description here of what sepsis is. Sepsis is a potentially life-threatening complication of an infection Sepsis occurs when chemicals released into the bloodstream to fight the infection trigger inflammatory responses throughout the body. This inflammation can trigger a cascade of changes that can damage multiple organ systems, causing them to fail. So this is the peritoneum, or that little cover that covers all these organs, and it keeps them in place and keeps them intact within the abdominal cavity. But what actually happens is when we have leaking out of those organs, so the stomach, the small intestine, anywhere that's perforated, or even the large intestine, it's going to leak into this peritoneal cavity because between the peritoneum, which is this covering, this outer bluish coloring, and the abdominal viscera, there's a potential space. And what actually happens is all that content from whatever's in that specific organ that's perforated leaks into this cavity. And then we have the development of peritonitis. And peritonitis is quite a problem. And it can become life-threatening because this is usually a completely sterile cavity and it's just a potential cavity which means that there's no real fluid or anything that is found within this cavity. But when there's a perforation, we now have the entry of the digestive enzymes, stomach acid, the normal flora of the gut which is the gut bacteria and we also have whatever food we've eaten and all this leaks out into this peritoneal cavity. And this causes a great deal of problems because when these fluids and enzymes and all these bacteria enter the peritoneum, they have the tendency to cause sepsis. And sepsis, once it being caused, can be fatal to the individual. So if you look at my picture below, we have the normal digestive system, and then you can see the inflamed digestive system with all that fluid and enzymes and bacteria leaking around and hovering over the organs but within the peritoneal cavity, and that is peritonitis. So what are the signs and symptoms of a gastrointestinal perforation? Our patient will present with fever, chills, anorexia, severe abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, swelling of their abdomen, fatigue, passing of less urine, stools or gas, shortness of breath, and dizziness. And once peritonitis has settled in the entire abdomen, 
the abdomen will begin to feel tender to the touch and could hurt in response to movement. Patients who reach this stage often lie still and avoid unnecessary movement. A high pulse rate and increased blood pressure, dehydration, and decreased bowel sounds are also noted. So I put in this little image that shows the signs and symptoms of peritonitis. So you can see we have that pulse rate, which means the heart rate goes up. We have an increase in the blood pressure. Our patient is dehydrated. They are experiencing pain. And we have that decrease in the bowel sounds. We also have that fever, nausea and vomiting, and anorexia. And something the doctor might notice on physical examination is that board-like abdomen, which is a sign uh, which shows rebound tenderness and abdominal distension with rigidity. So that is something that can be noted on the physical examination. So how is gastrointestinal perforation diagnosed? X-rays of the abdomen and abdominal series taken in supine and upright may be diagnostic and this will show free air under the diaphragm in 50 to 75 percent of cases. This free air is a sign of intra-abdominal tear. A CT scan of the abdomen will also show where the perforation is located and a blood test will show an increased white blood cell count. So if you look at my picture on the left we have the abdominal x-ray and you can notice the amount of free air that's within that abdominal cavity. And this is a sign that a perforation has occurred because whenever there's a tear or a perforation, we're going to have some kind of air or gas into that chamber. And this is a typical image of what the abdominal x-ray will look like. For the CT, we can see the free air. You can see how far away these organs are from the abdominal wall. And you can see this whole space here is filled with air. And this is the free air sign that is seen anterior to the liver and the arrow points to the falciform ligament. So you can see the liver is still attached to the anterior abdominal wall via the falciform ligament. But you can notice the amount of air that lies between the abdominal viscera and the abdominal wall. Treatment. The treatment involves surgical repair of the perforation. Surgery is usually done by an exploratory laparotomy and also includes a peritoneal washing procedure. In some cases, the surgeon must perform a cholestomy or a ileostomy. This surgery allows the contents of the intestines to empty into a bag through a stoma via a hole created in the abdomen. These stomas are usually temporary, allowing for proper drainage and ensuring the rest of the intestines heal well. In addition to surgery to repair the perforation, intravenous antibiotics and fluids are administered to either prevent an infection from occurring or to treat one that has already started. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.